Hey everybody, and welcome to the boring. It is the boring. It is the boring. Presented by Shaq Eye Gear. She's Jess Ballard, and I'm Alan Dietz. I did know that. That was just me joking around. <laughs> we got a big show here for you today. Take a look here at our pace lap, if you will. Yes. Preston Peltier is going to join us along with Steve Zacharias, Tommy Baldwin, Matt Weaver, and Lacey Walden. And uh, lots to, to get you caught up on. Uh, let's start, uh, Jess, uh, in the cup world. Uh, of course, they were at the L.A. Coliseum this past weekend for the Clash at the Coliseum. Um, Let's. I will just say uh, this is nothing against what happened at the Coliseum. I hate halftime shows. I hate Super Bowl halftime shows. I know. You- I hated whatever that was at the Coliseum this past weekend. Um, but, hey, I we're racing I thought you just again. personally hated Rihanna the other week. Yeah, when I don't you were like go- her. I'm not going to watch it either. I'm going to watch the Super Bowl because of the Chiefs, but I'm not going to watch her. I turn it every time for like 30 minutes. I just hate the halftime shows. Can you give only, me a- I've watched Prince and um, Lady Gaga. What? Can you give me a 10-second explanation of why you hate halftime shows? I just, uh, I just, he uh, just hates, I just hates, don't like, I hates like, young I hate, snappers I hate having to fun. see people having a good time. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> what did you think of it? <laughs> I thought it was great. Yeah. But I'm sure you assumed I was going to say that, and I assumed you were going to say that. You did. We're just from two different generations. <laughs> I thought that it was two the, different generations. The people that look, the people that went. Yeah. were probably casual fans they were probably, and they looked like they were having a great time yeah they were probably you know co-eds going to university of southern california it's a good time to go out and and they may have showed up i think the thought process is they show up to this race and they're like nascar has wiz khalifa and a halftime show and all this man we got to go to more nascar races that's yeah. the hope well then they're going to get a rude awakening after that um <sighs> The other piece of news that came out, and it actually came out yesterday, are friends with the Cars Tour. It was announced that those races will be televised uh, or streamed on Flow. So uh, so what that does is it allows us to increase our coverage of the Cars Tour. Yes. It also allows us to work with our friends with Flow on the production. Yes. And uh, I think all around that it's... Uh, it's just another stepping stone, you know, they're yes. increasing their exposure with this streaming company, and I think more people are going to see them, and, and they're going to see better coverage. I'm happy about it because everyone benefits, and we've talked about how Cars Tour is just exploded over the last, well, specifically the last year, mm-hmm. and it's going to get the attention it deserves from multiple different parties and take it to the to the next level. Yep. And uh, we're excited about that, and we're uh, you and I are actually going to uh, meet with Keely Dubinsky today and uh, try to figure out ways that we can uh, increase that coverage and how we are going to do that. I thought we were just hanging out. <laughs> well, don't say that, or then we can't put it on the card. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk to our winner this past weekend of the Chili Willy 150 at Tucson Raceway. That's in or Tucson Speedway or Tucson Raceway Park, whatever you want to call it. But I do know that Preston Peltier is going to join us, and that'll be next. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety and the exclusive importer for Schrott belts and Schubert helmets. When risk is around every corner, let our experts help you select the best harness belts, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. Don't make safety an afterthought. We have 25 years of experience of educating our customers on all aspects of driver safety and providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, and Sport Cars. Visit our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina, or Danvers, Massachusetts. Or check us out online at hmsmotorsport.com to learn the details of our products and, of course, order online. 
PFC Brakes has more championships than any other, and now they're on every champion's car as the official brake provider for the Camping World SRX Series. Remember, PFC Brakes. The secret is, it's quicker. Welcome to Raceface Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Raceface Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. I'm Ty Majeski, and you're watching Racing America. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Bull Ring. Again, presented by our friends with Shaq Eye Gear. I'm Alan Dietz, along with Jess Ballard. Remember, if you're gaming or just on computers all day, Shaq Eye Gear is the way to go, right? Yeah. We've determined that if you sit at your computer all day, maybe you're not a cool gamer. Yeah, maybe you're just. These can still benefit you. Working nerd. <laughs> well, joining us now on the poll, our first guest today, winner of the Chili Willy 150 at Tucson Speedway this past weekend, it's Preston Peltier. Preston, congratulations on another win. Now, are you back in Colorado? I am. Yep. So I tell me yesterday. Yeah, what kind of trip is that for you from uh, Colorado down to Tucson? It's not far, and uh, the weather's a lot better than it is around here. So, uh, um, you know, we always welcome some uh, some sunshine and, and warm weather, especially this time of year, and, and some good racing, too. What do you feel like has made you so good in this race? Because it's really, to me, become uh, a staple in the winter uh to race down at tucson but it seems like you've got something figured out down there well i mean <clears throat> you've known me long enough that uh like yeah, i cut my teeth on tracks like hickory and concord and orange county and and uh, uh orange county and, and hickory especially you know you have to save a lot of tire um believe it or not like when i was young uh just coming up through the ranks there I got the opportunity and thankfully so to race guys like Mike Rowe and Freddie query. And, you know, if it's a 50 lap race, man, I'd, I'd beat the snot out of them. But, uh, unfortunately those are 150 lap races and, and we never, you know, I'd, I'd be lapsed down by the end of that deal. So, um, you know, thanks to those guys, you know, I, I learned a lot, a lot racing with them and, and figuring out tire management and, and really that's what, the whole deal is down there. That place is so rough and, and wore out that, uh, um, you, you gotta, you gotta manage your tires. Yeah. There's a lot of variables. So that's kind of what makes it fun about that race. You know, um, this year they kind of threw in, uh, a different tire than what we have previously been on. So that, that just gave it another, uh, another, you know, something to worry about. And, and, and uh, uh, it wasn't so much the right side tires as it was, we were more worried about wearing the left out. You mentioned cutting your teeth at tracks like Hickory. Have you always been based out of Colorado, or have you lived here in the North Car North Carolina, South Carolina? He's lived a little bit everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I I'm I'm pretty nomadic. Actually, it's probably time for me to move again. <laughs> <laughs> Every year or so. No, no. All kidding aside, uh, you know, like uh, really, you know, I was born and raised in California, but uh, like my my home, if I had to call home, it would have been the Carolinas and, and, uh, um, I miss it. And, and, you know, I miss the, the trees and, um, I don't miss the, the hot steamy weather, but, uh, um, I, I miss the competition and, and the racetracks especially. And I think that, uh, you know, maybe possibly this year, um, there's some races that we're going to put on the schedule, Hickory and maybe Wilkesboro that, that I'm going to get to come back and visit, see all my buddies and, and have a little fun. 
Well, it, number one, I'm glad that you asked that because sometimes you're so close to something that you, <laughs> you know, you you don't ask those type of uh, questions. So I'm glad that you asked Preston that for folks that might not know. Um, you I'm thought having, everyone's just a Preston or expert just as a historian. Every, yeah. <laughs> um, so I got to ask everybody this that drives super late models. You mentioned Hickory and North Wilkesboro. Uh, you're kind of right in the middle of, of this national super late model deal this year in the sense of what the SRL is trying to do from the West Coast and, and what STARS is trying to do from the East and the Midwest. What have you seen? What do you like? What it, what concerns you? Well, I mean, right off the top of my head, the big concern is cost. You know, like just the cost of living right now is, is incredible. You know, uh, um, uh, fuel to get to and from a racetrack is, is pretty pricey. Um, hotels have gone like, uh, out of control, you know, so find trying to find a place to stay, especially, um, when you have a multi day program, it, it, it really ramps the cost up on those races. So, um, that's it, it, to me, that was, that would be the main concern. Do you have to offset that with with unbelievably big purses? It helps. Um, you know, obviously it doesn't help everybody. It's going to help the ones that run good. And, uh, um, you know, like we factor that into our program when we look at what races we're going to attend and, and what the, what the purse is going to be and what, what are the chances that we're going to run good? And obviously, you know, um, uh, for myself, yeah, yeah, I like to be challenged. Uh, you know, that's why, cause, cause going to the snowball derby is that's a, that's a losing proposition. Um, you know, most times, even when you win the race, it's, it, you're not going to make anything. You're probably not even going to break even. So, um, you know, that's, that, that's why, you know, you want to go and race against the best and, and, and sharpen your metal and, and, uh, uh try to learn something. And, for me, that's that's been the focus. Is is um, of of all the tracks I've raced at across the country, uh, for whatever reason, you know, like that place is my Achilles heel. I can I can go anywhere else, slick track, you know, new asphalt, it doesn't matter, and 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 uh, put together a program where you know we're going to compete and we're going to we're going to be one of the ones to watch to to possibly take home the money. So. Uh, um, I, I'm I'm trying right now in the process of putting a deal together to to go back to Pensacola for the first stars race and uh, um, I'm really close on getting that done and that's the goal that's the next race for me hopefully and then we're gonna do some uh, some stuff here in the Northwest. Well, we're looking forward to being able to watch it here on Racing America again. Congratulations on the win this weekend and I uh, will check in with you again soon. Sounds good. Hopefully. All right, that's Preston Peltier coming off that win at Tucson. Joining us next, big icebreaker weekend at Florence Motor Speedway coming up. Steve Zacharias, he'll tell us about it when we come back. What creates a winning combination? Quality, focus, discipline, and most importantly, speed. At Pepperjack Kennels, we provide exceptional water and land training services for hardworking retrievers from leading in the field to leading on the track. Together, we establish winning dogs and a winning team. Devoted to retrievers and motorsports, we are Pepper Jack Kennels. Visit us online to learn more. Five Star Bodies, the most advanced bodies on the market. Aerodynamically engineered, manufactured from the highest grade and lightest weight materials. Tested tough for optimum performance. The highest quality and most durable products you'll find anywhere. Our products help racers around the world reach victory lane. Winning never looked so good. Faster, lighter, stronger, better. Five star. With a can of PB Blaster in your hand, even you can work it like a pro. PB Blaster busts the toughest rust anywhere it's found. In the garage. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. In the yard. Oh, that's right, you're in control. Come at me, bro. Penetrate tough rust anywhere around the house. Come on, get you some. That's right, baby. Woo! P 
BB Blaster. Don't bust your knuckles, bust your nuts. Get some! I just enjoy it. I, I think it helps me. Um, I think it's nice to go back and, and kind of see what you've learned since since you raced pa in the past and and the cars have changed a lot. So I just enjoy going back. I think it helps me become a better driver, um, you know, a little bit better awareness, um, you know, and things like that. But I overall just it's fun and, um, you know, it's, it's good to challenge yourself in something. I feel like the late model series are very tough. I mean, those guys run those cars every weekend and it's hard to just come in and and win a race, but uh, it's, it's a good opportunity to try that. Glad to have you back here with us on the Bull Ring, presented by Check Eye Gear. I'm Alan Dietz, along with uh, Jess Baller, and we were talking about uh, during the break, you those eyelashes so yes be careful with this check I guess. yes i'm moving so my uh casual lashes are at the new apartment and my formal lashes yeah. were all i had at home today well, sorry these are the ones i was born with and i've <laughs> got a feeling that our next guest our pavement pounder this week steve zacharias those are your original eyebrows too i would say right steve i believe so but there's been a lot of sleepless nights uh between myrtle beach and here so i, I <laughs> That might have got some put on at some point I didn't know about. But as far as I know, they are, yes. Well, I think Pavement Pounder is a good uh, title uh, for you because not only have you paved the pound, have you pounded the pavement <laughs> as far as racing, but uh, you've probably walked every inch of Florence Motor Speedway where we're going to have the icebreaker coming up this weekend. Flo will be airing that and will be part of the production. And, uh, I think that's safe to say that there's not much pavement around there that you haven't walked on. No, it's uh, it's true. And, and uh, what was funny is when we got here, uh, you know, I left Myrtle Beach Speedway and knew every inch of that place. I knew exactly where all the valves were. I knew where, um, you know, every electrical breaker was, what it belonged to, when something went bad uh, after going, you know, almost 10 years at Myrtle Beach Speedway. So when we got here, uh, I, I always joke that uh, the, one of the first days we were here, my kids were running around. They're like, "Dad, where's this? Where's this? Where's that?" I was like, I, "We're figuring this out together." I was like, "So just keep just keep looking, and if you find it, let me know about it." So, uh, but no, after three years uh, and a lot of improvements, you know, we've done a lot of work here uh, to redo buildings, redo bathrooms. Uh, so we've actually been the ones putting it in. So now I know where it's at. Yeah. Well, I'm interested to know how does being a driver. You know, a lot of owners, promoters, maybe were drivers at one point in time, but you so recently have driven. How does that affect your your management? Yeah, it gives me a uh, perspective on both sides, right? So, um, you know, I'll take uh, Martinsville, for example. Uh, I, I felt I, I may have uh, had help uh, becoming a, a part of the turn one and two wall. Uh, and as the driver, and I, I go with, uh, you know, for our, our position as a race director, we always, since we were at Myrtle Beach Speedway, there's no racing incidents anymore because everyone sees it differently. So the guy that gets spun sees it differently than the guy that did the spinning. So I eliminated all of the questions. And if you're both part of it, whether you agree or disagree, um, you know, both of you, both of you, if seen, were going to the rear. So uh, again, on my behalf uh, at Martinsville, I felt uh, I may have been done wrong, and I'm sure uh, the the participant behind me uh, felt it was done the other way. So. Um, you know, I see it differently when it happens. So I can kind of uh, rationalize as a driver, but I can also rationalize as the promoter and understand that, um, you know, there's a lot of different variables in all situations. It's not cut and dry uh, when it comes to race directing. And I tell people all the time is that I've been in the race car. I know how fast paced everything is, uh, but people don't realize what it's like to be a race director and how fast you have to make the decisions um, that are critical to your business throughout the entire year. So you make the wrong move here, uh, it could affect the rest of the season. So race directing is uh, just as equally as difficult, I, I think, as driving the car, uh, but people just don't give it enough credit. So one of the, the biggest issues that you'll have this weekend is a great one to have because Dale Earnhardt Jr. is coming back to race. He raced there uh, in November, and it was by far the biggest crowd that, that's ever been at Florence Motor Speedway. Um, what do you feel like you learned in that race that 
you can take into this weekend and maybe do different, if anything? Well, I mean, we learned uh, a lot about our facility and the parking, right? So uh, Myrtle Beach Speedway, you remember the field we had outside, um, you know, is a lot more room for, you know, having that kind of crowd. So, you know, uh, right out of the gate, getting the participants and everyone that's going to show up first thing Saturday morning to go to the infield, have them parking in the right spot uh, to make sure that it helps the, the people that are coming to watch the event later. Because you know how it is as a racer, you pull up, you, you want to be the first one out when it's over. So you put yourself in the best position. Well, then that throws me off for the the fans and everyone coming in. So learned a little bit there. I learned where a lot of water lines in the parking lot were that I didn't know existed because I had to fix them <laughs> mid event. Um, but, uh, you know, I think I think the race side, I think, you know, the, the racing we've gotten kind of control of. Uh, we had a couple things we need to work on for um, lining up cars. And we learned a little bit from having 42 cars uh, going at it, uh, for one race. So, uh, this race, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I'm surprised uh, we had 28 at the icebreaker last year. And right now we've got 40 signed up. So yeah. I, I think I, I know for a fact, I'm going to cap it at 42. So if anyone's watching this show and, uh, planning on being here, you've got to make sure you're one of the last two to sign up. So make sure you let me know, or, you know, go ahead and register those last two spots. Cause Alan, you know, uh, there's no really sense, uh, we might get to 45, we might get to 44, 46, but it's not worth having to send cars home. I'd right. rather not ask someone to come than I would put somebody in a position to spend the money on hotels and spend all this time to, to be here and then miss the race. So uh, the icebreaker has always been built to be a little bit more laid back um, than the 400. So uh, I'm just excited that it's here. Uh, off seasons are tough, obviously, as a racetrack promoter. Uh, so we're, we're excited that uh, it's time to get back to racing. Well, Myrtle Beach and Florence are very special to me. And I um, really have enjoyed uh, seeing what you've been able to do with Florence. I know it'll be another great weekend. I appreciate you joining us, and uh, we look forward to it. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you guys. And, uh, again, uh, it's going to be a great weekend. So uh, come on out. Temp temperatures are going to be perfect. Yep, that's right. Florence Motor Speedway, you'll be able to check it out this weekend. Thanks again, Steve. Thank you, guys. All right. Coming up next, we're going to talk to a guy who – had a lot of success last year as an owner of Open Wheel Modifieds. That is Tommy Baldwin to talk about his plans after a big 2022 going into 2023. He'll join us next. Communication is key in the racing world. When it comes to at-the-track communications, there is only one place to call. Racing Electronics is the number one source for professional race communications worldwide. Over 20 years in the business proves their dedication to the sport. With every driver and crew communication, two-way radios and headsets, scanners and more, Racing Electronics is a one-stop communication source for all your motorsports needs. Before the green flag flies, make sure you have all your team communication gear from Racing Electronics. Stop by and see a Racing Electronics representative at the track near you. Visit their showroom in Concord, North Carolina, or order online at racingelectronics.com. It's race time on Short Track America. Dirt or pavement, from east to west. Short Track America features some of the biggest grassroots races around the country. Super late models to street stop racing. If it's on a half mile or smaller track, it's on Short Track America. On MAV TV, Motorsports Network. Zerk Motorsport has been providing industry-leading cleaning and analysis for heat exchangers for over 15 years. Now that same technology is here, in the U.S., tailored to your specific competitive needs for every racing market. The only 100% certain way to know that your, your cooler is clean. Go to ZerkMotorsport.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more details on how we can help you gain Zerk speed. I'm Bobby Labonte, Cookout Modified number 25, and you're watching Race in America. Welcome back to the Bull Ring as we get you caught up and preview everything coming up this weekend in the world of racing. Or, what is he? Lucky Dog. I should say. Oh, uh, yes. I love yes. these new names. Yes, thank you. Is Tommy Baldwin. 
And the reason he's the lucky dog is because you dominated tour type modified racing last year with your cars. First off, thanks for joining us. I, I know uh, you're on the way down to new Smyrna and, uh, you decided to, to stop down and see our cousins in Georgia, right? Yeah, it's, uh, too bad. I'm on the other side of Georgia with the wrong accent like you have, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we just, uh, got off the exit real quick to talk to you guys and heading back, uh, on the road and to new Smyrna. Before we um, before we talk about 2023, because I know it's going to be equally as big, uh, could you have ever dreamed 2022 was going to be as good as it ended up being? Well, I mean, when you run as many races as we did, uh, you know, you, you're gonna you're gonna get lucky sometimes. But uh, yeah, we had a good car all year. Um, all four drivers did a really good job whole year keeping the car uh up front out of out of uh harm's way and uh we were lucky enough to get some wins and uh win some championships man i know there's a lot of racers watching right now that see the blue skies the race tra trailer in the background there the palm trees and they know that trip down to florida very for well. speed weeks very well it's like the air changes and you're like oh my gosh race season's here Let's go. So if you could give, what's the one thing that gets you through a week like the World Series in New Smyrna? What's your, like, one tip? Um, get plenty of rest before you head down there because <laughs> it's a long week. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we got our hands full this week. We got uh, two cars running the tour show. Um, we got two cars running speed weeks. And uh, my, my two sons are driving. Uh, the crate races, the four, four crate races, uh, as well. So, uh, we, we're taking down six cars. Uh, it's been a busy winter preparing. Um, uh, you know, we went down to New Smyrna a couple of weeks ago and tested and, uh, tested with the kids the other day in Florence, South Carolina. So, uh, we're ready to go. How, uh, how many years you've been heading down to, to speed weeks? I was thinking about that yesterday, Alan. I, I think it's, uh, 40, 42 or 43 years now I've been uh, coming down to Florida racing. Uh, obviously, I was disappeared for uh, about 20 years cup racing, but uh, yeah, still coming down to Daytona and uh, New Smyrna. But uh, yeah, it's been a long time and uh, it still hasn't changed. It's still like like you guys said, it's still very exciting and uh, woke up this morning uh, excited to get on the road and uh, start the season. Do you get that feeling? We talked to Rusty Marcus last week with New Smyrna. Do you get that feeling here in the last couple of years that, that the World Series is kind of back like it was back in the day when it was so successful? Yeah, it is. It's uh, They've done a good job. Uh, you know, they brought on Ricky Brooks a couple of years ago, two, three years ago, uh, started the process of uh, regulating the rules the proper way. Um, they got our they got out of hand a little bit uh, from what I understood. And uh, he started a process and uh, he's not there anymore, but we got a really good group of guys that uh, are there now uh, keeping that process going and keeping the field even. So, um, and I think, I think uh, after COVID and during COVID, I, I think that changed everyone's philosophy of, Hey, we want to go have fun again. Uh, we want to go down and race and go back down to Florida and have a good time and, and, and start the year off. And, on top of that, with uh, NASCAR starting the season with us, with the NASCAR Modified Wheeling Tour, uh, starting the season there at New Smyrna on Saturday is a, is a big step. And the news for 2023 is that you guys will have Doug Kobe behind the wheel. Tell us all the details about that. I mean, I know people are really, really excited to see that happen. About it towards the end of the year last year, uh, Jimmy and I and 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 Doug, um, we thought uh, it was probably best to, for him to try to uh, get as much sponsorship from Mayhew to do as many races as he possibly can for us uh, to go for not only the owners' championship like we won last year, um, but also the the drivers' championship so we can win it all this year. And uh, Jimmy, uh, we built we built another car for Jimmy to run three or four tour races uh, this year as well. So uh, we'll have a couple cars. Had a couple, uh, you know, about three, four races this year as well with Jimmy and Doug. But uh, we're excited with Doug, with Mayhew Tools uh, coming on board and, and and being part of our race team uh, full time now. And, uh, you know, obviously Doug's track record speaks for itself. Six championships, going for the seventh championship this year. 
uh, with the 7NY. So we're excited about that. Real quick, uh, before I let you go, um, you mentioned the, the crate modifieds. Where do you see them right now, especially in the South? Man, they are growing. I mean, you know, the coolest part is I think they caught it at the right time when all of our, our all of the younger generation of the racing folk down here is are growing up enough to to race to drive, and uh, it's a it's a great series. Um, it's not only growing in the south; it's growing up in the northeast at you know Riverhead Raceway, and you know the SK Light. They kind of run the, the the same rules as Stafford Motor Speedway. Um, which they put on an incredible race there. It doesn't matter what what race is in, at Stafford. It puts on an incredible race there. But, um, you know, it's, you know, up up throughout Pennsylvania, um, up north at uh, Spencer Speedway and Lancaster and all those that, you know, it's it's really grown into a nice feeder system um, to be able to, for these kids to grow into uh, the modified series for sure. It's awesome. Well, Tommy, uh, there's a lot of folks that I pull for, but I was so, so glad to see the success that you had last year. Uh, good luck down at speed weeks. And, uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you more here this year. Thanks, Alan. I appreciate it. And, uh, you guys have fun. Thanks. Be safe on that drive. All right, buddy. Thanks. All right. That's Tommy Baldwin headed down to new Smyrna. When we come back, might talk a little bit of short track racing, might talk a little cup racing. You never know when Matt Weaver's here, he'll join us next. Welcome to Raceface Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Raceface Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Welcome to the new home for race fans, Racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA. Rhino Classifieds is an online classifieds platform built for racers and race fans. Rhino makes finding parts, trailers, and specialty vehicles easy. Posting is free. Signing up is free. That's a lot of free. So jump in and join the most streamlined motorsports-focused classifieds out there at rhino.co. That's R-Y-N-O dot C-O. Glad to have you back here with us on the Bull Ring with Alan and Jess, or Jess and Alan, however you like the... I like the second one. Yeah, of course you do. Uh, as many people are today, Matt Weaver of Short Track Scene is headed down to Florida. Now, Matt, you're going from Alabama, I'm assuming, correct? Oh, uh, well, as I tend to, right? I, I went from North Carolina to Alabama to Florida. Um, it's, it's hard for me to, to stand still for very long. So uh, I've, I've been bouncing around a lot this week. No doubt. And that gives us a chance to talk about the NASCAR Cup Series here with you a little bit. So Jess and I, in the first segment of the show, talked about the clash at the Coliseum. Um, 
Well, let me just <laughs> ask you what your thoughts are on that event and the future of it. Okay, so listen, I, I know I, I saw it. I was on I was on the Twitter machine. I was on the internet. I, I saw what everyone thought about it. And listen, it, it's fun. It's fun in the same way that um, eating an entire box of nerds candy is fun. It's not very dietarily fulfilling. Um, I don't think the, I don't think it's going to keep a doctor away, but for one day, every now and then you swallow that entire box of nerds and you feel good about it. I thought it was, it was just goofy, silly exhibition race fun. Now let me interrupt you. you. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question with that said. So the big thing going around this past weekend was if, Auto Club Speedway is not ready in 24. Is that a points race? No, absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> no, I agree. No, no way. I mean, listen, um, it, you, listen. I, I, I think you can have a cup race on a quarter mile, right? Like, if you were to tell me, and this is not realistic, but if you were telling me that we were going to have a cup race at Anderson Speedway in Indiana – that that tracks to me, right? Because I, I think that 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 place with the banking, mm-hmm. you can you can have more um, authentic style racing than you could have on a on a parking lot. I even think that maybe uh, Bowman Gray could probably better sustain that kind of racing, just because there's a little bit more room to work and and to to it, it gives you a lane and a quarter. This is not even a lane, yeah. and so it's just not a, a real. I don't want to say it's not a real racetrack, but you're very limited in the kind of racing that you can do there. And you can do a good race on a quarter mile, just not that one. But I thought that when you had uh, Chase Elliott and Martin Truex during the heat races, watching their peers just beat the crap out of each other. And Chase was at risk of missing the show and he's laughing and having a good time. And the fans are in the stands. Listen, let's talk about the musical selection, right? Like that is not, traditionally my jam i'm more of an indie rock guy i'm not even a country guy but i recognize that in that moment nascar isn't trying to speak to me and i think this is so very important that for 36 weeks out of the year nascar for the most part does a really good job of speaking to me as a racing fan this was one week where they tried something a little different for the second year in a row to reach someone else, to bring them into our tent, our racing community. And I love that. I thought the racing was compelling. Was it a bit of a, a shish show as they say? Yeah. But listen, we, we do a lot of late model races and I think a good shish show is good for business too every now and then. I don't want to do it every week, but having one show every couple of months where guys are just wrecking each other every single lap and and people are getting ticked off and aggravated, is that good for business too? Yeah. So when you put all of that into a blender, I had fun. And I bet you, if you were to ask everyone who walked out of the, the stands that night, did you have a good time? They would probably say yes too. Well, just the best thing about it is, is, you get everybody good and pissed off right at the very beginning, very right off the get go. So that that's a good thing in my book. What? Okay. Well, <laughs> can I just say that uh, both of your responses have been completely predictable? And so I'm I'll sure just, you think it's wrong. Well, I agree with Matt wholeheartedly. Okay. I think that he hit the nail on the head with let's let's try to determine who the intended audience was for that event. All right, well, let's talk about a real race. I asked him about a oh, real race. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Alan, I'm surprised I didn't see you on my timeline on, on I Sunday can't night. Do that. So, anyway, um, we talked to Tommy Baldwin earlier, and he had stopped on his way down to Speed Weeks. And in the background, we, we saw the blue skies. I'm painting you the picture, Matt. The blue <laughs> skies, the, the palm holler. trees. The haulers in the gas station parking lot, they got the big, tall subway sign for the gas station he's at, and it just it just screamed Speed Weeks. The, <laughs> it's the view that everyone sees driving down to Florida, whether it be for NASCAR racing, dirt racing, mm-hmm. pavement racing, uh, and it, I, I said it's like the air shifts. So I know that's what you're experiencing right now. And I'm also glad to see that you remembered to bring your laptop with you. I saw that you almost lost <laughs> yes. with, left without it. If you could describe the feeling in the air this week in one word or a few words, what would it be? 
Well, I, I got I got to get off track for a second. I didn't realize Tommy was on the show, mm -hmm. and so I didn't realize it was that kind of show. I, I was over here censoring myself earlier <laughs> and trying to like be very subdued, and you know, I just said shish instead of the, yeah. the alternative. I didn't realize we were doing the Tommy Baldwin no, show. No, Tommy <laughs> did. Tommy did good, so don't ruin it. He behaved. Okay, he did. so. Listen, when you go down to Florida for Speed Weeks, my favorite thing every year, and I'm going to paint the picture here too, is there's something really strange about crossing the the I-10 threshold when you make that transition from um, the Florida Panhandle to the Florida Peninsula. The air does shift, and I don't know if there's an actual atmospheric explanation for it, or if it's just you know the expectation that we're almost there, and so the way that you interpret the weather kind of changes. But no, I I I, I get giddy. Every single time that I make that transition south of I-10 and, and move on to the peninsula, knowing what the next couple of weeks are are going to mean to me, because I'm a race fan. I'm not just a NASCAR guy or a short track guy. I get sprint cars. I get late models, pavement, dirt, and everything builds towards the NASCAR weekend next weekend. So, listen, I, I, I tell people all the time, people are like, well, we don't have speed weeks anymore because it's just four days for the, at the big track. And I'm like... Yeah, but I love I love it from the standpoint of it now gives me a lot more flexibility to go to Volusia, to go to New Smyrna, to go to Bubba, to go to, to Ocala, to go to um, East Bay, to go to all these different places and really expand my racing horizons. And oh, by the way, you're going to see NASCAR drivers, the ones you would have wanted to see at the big track for two weeks anyway. You're going to see them in all of those tracks and you're going to have a better chance to interact with them, get an autograph, have a conversation. And so to me, that is what speed weeks represents well i agree matt and i'm sure that it'll come across uh in all your coverage here over the next couple of weeks uh be safe on the trip down there and uh can't wait to see what you got uh coming out of there here in the next couple of weeks stand for it talk to y'all later all right matt weaver on the way down to daytona we come back we're going to go on the opposite side of the country up to the northwest and talk to Lacey Walden as they try to get Tri-City Raceway back and ready to go in April. With a can of PB Blaster in your hand, even you can work it like a pro. PB Blaster busts the toughest rust anywhere it's found. In the garage. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. In the yard. Oh, that's right, you're in control. Come at me, bro. Penetrate tough rust anywhere around the house. Come on, get you some. That's right, baby. Woo! PB Blaster. Don't bust your knuckles, bust your nuts. Get some. Welcome to Raceface Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Raceface Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. Classifieds is an online classifieds platform built for racers and race fans. Rhino makes finding parts, trailers, and specialty vehicles easy. Posting is free. Signing up is free. That's a lot of free. So jump in and join the most streamlined motorsports-focused classifieds out there at rhino.co. That's R-Y-N-O dot C-O. You're watching Racing America. We're back here on the Bull Ring, presented by Shaq Eye Gear. And, of course, we have titled segments. And I didn't title this one because I didn't think Lucky Dog was apt for where Lacey Walden is no. right now with Tri-City Raceway and Hermiston Raceway out in the Northwest. And first off, Lacey, I appreciate you joining us. But for the folks that don't know 
um, you went to bed one night, I guess, and things were fine out at Tri-City, and you, you woke up one day, and, and it was just a mess. What happened? So on November 5th, we had a really, really big windstorm, and Tri-Cities um, were known to have big windstorms, but nothing like this. Um, so we had sustained big wind speeds of like 84 miles an hour. And then it was recorded on record. We had gusts up to 107 miles an hour. So that's, you know, like a category two, you know, hurricane level wind speed. Um, and one of our great guys that work out there went and checked on it at, you know, four in the morning, his name is Moose. And he was like, hey, we have problems. Um, the grandstands folded in half and flew into our catch fence, which that is the best thing that came out of it was knowing our catch fence was, That's you know, <laughs> legitimate. Um, and, you know, light pulls down. And we had just reopened this facility after 17 years of it being dormant. So, um, and that happened in 2020. So we have just been working our hardest to, um, you know, make this facility great again. And then all of this happened. And so the team is already back at it. Um, and the community has been rallying around us, but, um, Moose, Mark Jacobs, um, Jesse Brown, Eric Van Winkle, Chris Pointer, the Johnston family, the Babcock family, they have all been huge, huge supporters of getting this, you know, the pieces back together. And we're so lucky on that. Um, but, you know, it it comes pricely. It's, it's not a cheap thing to just fix. So, you know, we're talking grandstands. So 500 to 700 seeds gone. So, it's been, um, you know, a lot of work to get that all fixed, but the team has been working from, you know, seven in the morning till late at night to try to get this back together before the Apple Cup in April. So, Well, if you're going to send one of your people out in the middle of a windstorm, it should be the guy named Moose. I agree. So <laughs> thank goodness for Moose. Yeah. But yeah. I mean good thing you didn't send Tiny out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, yeah, Moose is amazing. He is um was going out there for a generator because his power went out because of the windstorm and and so he saw all the damage and you just couldn't believe what happened. So I feel like it's a reoccurring theme here from track to track that the people that are on staff care so much about the facility they most of them have some sort of you know sentimental attachment to the property from you know its history or they grow to love it and we've seen you guys work so hard to get this track where it was and then for this to happen it's one of those things that you're like oh why but I've you know, come to learn that sometimes things like this happen for a reason and it doesn't make it suck any less, but you know, yeah. you know, a little bit of improvements to the facility now that you have to redo stuff. I mean, there's gotta be some silver lining. So how can the community, the racing community help you guys out come race season? Um, because I know a lot of people are going to be touched and, and want to help. Yeah, absolutely. So right now we have set up a donation page on redmountaineventcenter.com uh, and it's the donation tab. Um, and we've had some donors step on board, which we couldn't think enough. So thank you everybody that has helped so far. And also buying a ticket and being there in person is a big deal for the facility and it will help us be able to generate enough income to put all of the pieces back together again. So, well, if you want to help out folks, uh, it's a great facility. It's a great, uh, family, a great staff, go to red mountain event center. Anything that you can do to help out will be very greatly appreciated. Um, Lacey, we look forward to being there with racing America again for the apple cup. Uh, 
it'll be a totally different place then and i know it'll take a lot of work to get there but uh i'm sure you guys will be very proud once you get there yes yes we will and we're excited to get sales up for um the apple gup tonight at 5 p.m um pacific time well we're looking forward to it and you folks uh out west uh continue to support uh red mountain event center tri-city raceway hermiston all the folks out there Lacey, i appreciate the update and uh i hope to talk to you before the apple cup and uh you can tell me about all the work you guys got done awesome thank you so much alan and jess we appreciate you guys and we'll see you soon all right thank you L Lacey walden and again be sure to help the folks out there at Tri-City Raceway. We come back, we'll get you ready for a big weekend, weekend of racing action in the short track world. Welcome to the new home for race fans, Racing America. Live short track racing. Exclusive team content. <laughs> Any NASCAR fan is really a short track fan at heart. Behind the scenes access. From grassroots to NASCAR, join us at the home for race fans everywhere. Racing America, it's in our DNA. SRI Performance and Stock Car Steel are your all-inclusive motorsports warehouses with more than 450 product lines. They have everything to put you in victory lane, from professional racing to street performance. SRI and Stock Car Steel have you covered with leading brands as well as a large selection of steel, aluminum, and plastics. With locations in North Carolina and Indiana, access has never been easier. SRI has the world's largest inventory of used parts. SRI Performance in Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, your one-stop shops for everything racing. Welcome to Raceface Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Raceface Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety and the exclusive importer for Schrott belts and Schubert helmets. When risk is around every corner, let our experts help you select the best harness belts, head restraints, helmets, and racing attire for your type of racing. Don't make safety an afterthought. We have 25 years of experience of educating our customers on all aspects of driver safety and providing the most advanced driver safety products to NASCAR, IndyCar, Sprint Cars, and Sport Cars. Visit our stores in Mooresville, North Carolina, or Danvers, Massachusetts. Or check us out online at hmsmotorsport.com to learn the details of our products and, of course, order online. Well, we're glad to have you back here on the Bull Ring here with us this afternoon and to get us ready for the weekend upcoming. I turn it over now to Jess Ballard. Ah, yes. Um, we're about to be spoiled this weekend yes. in the coming weeks. Yeah. According to Alan's notes, we have the Icebreaker, the yep. World Series. Both on flow. Both on flow, but coverage on Racing America. Coverage on Racing America, and we'll be are part we, of the production. We okay. Yeah, we'll be part of the production team on both those races. Florence this weekend with the Icebreaker, and then the World Series. What I think from <clears throat> for the Friday, next little bit. yeah, for the next couple of months. So, and uh, Citrus joking. County. Yes, Citrus County. Uh, our next races here on Racing America will be February eighteenth and twenty fifth. Both of those will be from Citrus County Speedway. And I will tell you, we're also working um, with another racetrack about possibly uh, having a couple of other races here in February. And then uh, March is just ridiculous. Uh, cray cray. Yeah, I mean, we'll be at um, Montgomery for the Alabama 200. Um, we'll have coverage from uh, Five Flags of the inaugural Stars National event. Same weekend, uh, the following weekend, we'll be at the Easter Bunny 150 at Hickory and at the Rattler at South Alabama Speedway for the SRL National Series. 
and then um then we got uh the icebreaker at thompson and had all sorts of stuff coming up so we got a ton of stuff here for you on race in america and uh we're busy getting ready for it our crews just like everybody else is heading down to speed weeks and as i said um our mark keeler and zach evans and will bellamy and the entire gang connor sullivan they'll be uh down at new smyrna for our uh help in the production um of the uh world series which will be on flow and then as i said also uh racing america will be at florence for the icebreaker this weekend and i'll tell you um i i am really excited about probably more excited i don't know if i'm more excited than the the sun drop car that dale jr had at north wilkesboro but i'm very excited about the car he's going to have at florence this weekend because really and honestly that was his late model paint job the sun drop deal was was for a few races the the first year that he ran late models but this white paint scheme with the red number is the one that he pretty much ran in his entire career at myrtle beach and and at florence did i miss a paint scheme reveal uh, obviously i did did they release it yet well i don't you're describing it to me in great detail well, if they didn't release it yet, you're going to you really like it. You found out here it. on the bull ring. Yeah, you're going to really like that paint scheme this weekend. At no, I think they released it somewhere, but um, that uh, that brings back a lot of memories mm -hmm. of uh, watching him race at Myrtle Beach and at Florence. And um, I think Kelly drove a – she drove a black 38. Dale Jr. drove a white 3. And Kerry drove a red 8. And that was – the trio of dale earnhardt's kids sometimes i wish i was around to me to too that. i wish you were around back then too you would have really enjoyed it you'd enjoyed a lot of great races. we would have had a great time oh, we gotta go to break folks okay. we're going over now <laughs> we're we're just sitting here jabbering amongst ourselves we come back we'll wrap up the show after this to at the track communications there's only one place to call racing electronics is the number one source for professional race communications worldwide over 20 years in the business proves their dedication to the sport with every driver and crew communication two-way radios and headsets scanners and more racing electronics is a one-stop communication source for all your motorsports needs before the green flag flies make sure you have all your team communication gear from racing electronics stop by and see a racing electronics representative at the track near you Visit their showroom in Concord, North Carolina, or order online at racingelectronics.com. Hooters and racing go together like killer wings and ice-cold beer. Racing has been at the core of Hooters' DNA from the beginning. Whether it's backing the best drivers or serving up the best food on race day, race fans know Hooters is the real deal. Big screens, great food, Good times. Hooters, the official home of race fans. Well, it's the final lap here on the Bull Ring. We want to thank all of our guests, including Preston Peltier, Steve Zacharias, Tommy Baldwin, Matt Weaver, and Lacey Walden. Of course, there'll be all sorts of action that we'll be watching this weekend, as we mentioned a little bit earlier here on racing america and uh of course the super bowl oh yes go chiefs right right answer i don't even know who the other team is me either 
you know what? Here's the other thing uh, I want to tell you, uh, and I'll just be completely honest as to why there won't be a live bull ring next week. I have to have a sleep study to see if I'm narcoleptic. Just kidding. <laughs> but to see if I'm narcoleptic or not. So what we're going to have is a best of the bull ring here next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Some of our best interviews here to start the season off. And uh, then we'll be back in two weeks for uh, to wrap Speed Weeks up. There is so much transparency in this show. Yeah, if you want I to know it. the truth, I don't want anybody to get worried about why we're not on. So uh, whenever you see the best of the bull ring next week again, oh, it'll Alan, be because he's had of... a sleep study. Yeah. It... <laughs> oh, what happened? You don't even need to go to the study. No, I, can I don't help need you to out. go to the study. Yeah, that's what my wife said. She's like, Doc, I don't. Uh, I don't think I think we're wasting our time with that. So, uh, for Jess Ballard, I'm Alan Beats. I'm going to go take a nap, and we will see you back here on the Boring Next. Welcome to Race Face Digital Collectible Cards. Are you a driver or a team looking to expand your brand? Want to connect with your fans, give sponsors more exposure, and earn income from all card sales? Then Race Face Digital has you covered. Digitize your brand with five different collectible cards. Enrollment is now open to all drivers and all series. Visit racefacedigital.com today and use invite code RA1. believe it right now racing in my opinion is as healthy as it's been in the last 15 to 20 years just wanted to make that first lap go. <laughs> <laughs> Blaster busts the toughest rust anywhere it's found. Mmm, that's what I'm talking about. Penetrate tough rust with complete control. That's right, baby! PB Woo! Blaster, don't bust your knuckles, bust your nuts. Get some!